Philippians chapter 1, through the Bible, part 3, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 verse 6, because this is my life verse and therefore very meaningful to me, I hope you won't mind if I tell you about it. I was a very poor boy when I went away to college. My dad had been killed in an accident in a cotton gin when I was 14 years old. My mother took my sister and me to Nashville, Tennessee. I had to get a permit that allowed a boy of 14 to go to work, and I worked for a wholesale hardware concern. I had to be up by 5 o'clock in the morning to pick up the mail and have it sorted and on the desks of all the officials in each department. I should have been in school, and I wanted to go to school. Later I had the privilege of going back to school because a wonderful friend acted as a father to me. He had a son who was a drunkard. He had wanted his son to get a college education, but he didn't. So the man helped me get a job, and I was able to go to college. Every year I thought it would be my last year. I never thought God would see me through. I had very little faith. The last year I was in college was during the Depression. 1928 and 1929 were bad years. I couldn't get a job and had no money. On graduation day, after receiving my degree, I returned to my room in the dormitory, still in my cap and gown, and sat dejectedly on the edge of my bed. My roommate came and asked, What in the world? Did somebody die? I said, Just as well to. I thought God had called me to the ministry. I'm through college, the depression has hit, and I don't even have a job for this summer. I haven't a dime to go to seminary next year. While we were still talking, the phone rang. It was for me. On the other end of the line was a dear little lady who asked me to stop by her home where she lived with her sister. They were both widows, and they looked as if they had come out of the antebellum days. They attended the church where I taught a class of intermediate boys, and I herded the boys into the church service every Sunday morning. The sisters sat in the pew behind us, and I always thought they disapproved. But in their home that day each handed me an envelope in memory of her husband. I left as soon as it was polite to go, hurried around the corner, and opened the envelopes. The first contained a check for $250. I hurriedly opened the other envelope and found another check for $250. Do you know what $500 was like during the Depression? I felt like a millionaire. That night the Sunday school had a banquet for me, a farewell banquet, and they gave me a check for $100. So now I had $600. That is the money with which I went to seminary the next year. That night at the banquet someone gave me this verse. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That has been my life verse ever since that night. Now let's consider this verse for a moment. Being confident is causative and could be translated. Since I am confident of this very thing, Paul knew what he was talking about. He which hath begun, will perform. The word for perform, means to carry through. He will consummate what he began. Until the day of Jesus Christ. You and I today are not living in the day of the Lord. We are not living in the day of the Old Testament. We are not living in the day of the millennium. We are not living in the day of eternity. We are living in the day of Jesus Christ. That day will be consummated when he comes to take his own out of this world. And the Holy Spirit has sealed you and me until the day of redemption. Paul wrote to the Ephesian believers, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4 verse 30 And until then, you can count upon God to consummate whatever he intends for you. He is going to see it through. How wonderful. Now, my friend, let me ask you this. Is this practical for you and me? I don't know what your circumstances are, but if you are a child of God, I am sure you can testify that God has brought you up to the present moment, hasn't he? Can't you look back over your life 
and see how he has led you and provided for you? Then why should you be concerned about tomorrow? Do you think he is going to let you down now? I confess that this was my thinking when I finished college. You see, I went through college, but I didn't enjoy it as I should have. I never had joy because I always was afraid I couldn't go on. I just didn't believe God would see me through. So many times we Christians act like unbelievers. In fact, we live and act like practical atheists. The graduation was a happy experience for my classmates. I could see those rich kids being hugged by their parents. No one was there to throw their arms around me, but it wouldn't have made any difference if there had been a whole delegation of well-wishers because I thought I was through. I felt called to the ministry, but there was no possible way for me to go on to seminary. However, I had a wonderful Heavenly Father who, through Philippians 1 verse 6, put his arms around me and said, I'll see you through. And I want to testify today that he is still keeping his promise. It has been a comfort to me since I have had several bouts with cancer to know that my Heavenly Father said, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He is a good doctor also. In fact, he is the great physician, and he has said, whatever I have in store for you, I'm going to see you through until the day of Jesus Christ. So I am in his hands. This is a great verse of scripture. Oh! I have held on to this during many a dark night when the storm outside was beating against my little bark. My, how wonderful to have a heavenly father like this. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds, and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Philippians 1 verse 7 Even as it is meet, Meet is an old Elizabethan word that means right, even as it is right for me to think this of you all. Because I have you in my heart. Isn't that a wonderful place to carry your Christian friends? Partakers of my grace brings us back to the word fellowship. It is koinonia with a preposition that intensifies it. Sukoinonis, meaning being all wrapped up together. You may remember that lovely Abigail used these words when she talked to David. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. 1 Samuel 25 verse 29 Paul is saying that he and the Philippians are all wrapped up together as partners in the gospel. This is what I mean when I say that there were tender feelings of the Apostle Paul for this church at Philippi. He was closer to them than to any other church. It is so wonderful to have Christian friends like this who are sharing in the great enterprise of getting out the Word of God. There is that sympathetic cooperation, besides the spiritual communication, and it always produces sweet communion. 